This is a gem. This is a gem. And this is a Jane. Welcome to a rush guide to generators. Though generators are the most important and central objective in the game, it seems like nobody has ever done a video focused on them on their own. Well, I'm about to change that. Here's what I have in store for you today. First off, we'll go through the basic numbers and information about generators. Everything you absolutely need and have to know. Right after that, I'll provide you with the most important do's and don'ts regarding gen strategies. Second to last, the most important perks for survivors shall be highlighted and checked upon. And finally, we'll look over the most important perks for killers. Alright, let's start with the basic numbers. There are 7 generators on the map, 5 of which have to be completed. You can either detect them through their flashing lights, stuck on the pole attached to it, or through their environment on, fully or partially, indoor maps. A generator has 80 charges. A single survivor will take 80 seconds to fully repair a generator. One charge every second. This time will be divided by the number of people currently working on that generator. But there is a catch. There is a 15% repair speed penalty when working on the gen with multiple people. This will lead to the following numbers. We'll come back to that in a second. Killers can see the aura of every unfinished generator on the map. They are able to damage a generator, also known as kicking, referring to the animation of most killers. This will put it into the regressing state. When a generator is regressing, it will lose its charges at a rate of 0.25 charges per second. Basically 4 times as slow as a single survivor would take to repair it. There are perks that can influence this, but we will get to them later. Generators with progress can be heard in a distance of 20 meters. When a survivor is repairing that gen, that can be heard from the same distance. How far the generator is repaired can be heard and seen at a glance. Generators have 8 cylinders, 4 at each side. Every 25% of the progress affect the movement of one pair of cylinders, indicating the amount of progress. Depending how fast the currently affected cylinders move, you can take an educated guess about its precise progress or work on it as a survivor to see the progress bar, but a short lens will always tell you the most necessary information. If the generator is fully repaired, it will become activated. If it reaches the state, it can no longer be damaged no matter what happens. The generator's light will be turned on and you can see that it has been finished from afar. Killers won't see the aura of this generator anymore and it will become an irrelevant object. Ok, so much for the basics. Now let's go for the do's and don'ts. These are basic tips for killers and survivors. Don't gang up on generators. As you have seen, grouping up on a gen becomes less and less efficient, especially in the early stages of the game. Not only will you waste a lot of resources, you also increase the risk of the killer finding multiple people at once. There should never be more than two people at a single generator, three max if you have proved yourself. Instead, split up. Spreading out will increase the amount of repair progress by a lot. You might increase the chances of getting found, but even then, the killer probably will only pressure a single person and the rest will be able to keep up the repair progress. As a killer, don't kick every gen. More than often, it won't be worth the effort. As long as you are not certain that nobody can or will touch the generator pretty soon, or it is almost done and you want to pressure it, leave it be. Instead, bring regression perks. Pop goes the weasel, hex ruin, search and many other options should be a part of your build to create certain timeframes or playstyles regarding generator progress and safety. Try to use them as efficient as possible. 
as a survivor, don't bring chases close to other generators. Especially not if you are aware of your teammates working at these locations. That is the ideal situation for a killer, as he can pressure multiple people and hinder them and their progress. Instead, divert the killer's path and attention. Try to lure the killer as far away from the gen as possible. Perks like Bond and Empathy make it easier to locate teammates that are currently working on set generators. Try to keep those tiles in mind where gens have been finished already. As a killer, don't defend every generator without a plan. There are certain maps that employ you to run a strategic defense. Auto Haven Wreckers and Sanctum of Wrath are great examples for this. You need to know and analyze what generators have to be let go. Instead, prioritize certain gens and parts of the map. This will require map knowledge and intuition for some maps, and you will need to adapt on the fly. But most maps have locations that are worth defending and or worth to let go. Try to make yourself familiar with map layouts and adapt your strategy accordingly. As a survivor, don't create a 3 gen. 3 gens are endgame situations where the last 3 generators are in close proximity to each other. This can be especially deadly if these generators are in the map's center, not only making it easier to patrol them, but also pressuring the entire map. Instead, focus on the center generators. Try to get these done as early as possible. Most of the time, getting at least one or two central generators done will win you the game right off the bat. Perks like Deja Vu make it even easier to prevent 3 genning yourself for the entire game's duration. Now there is a whole menagerie of perks that are related to gens. More than 40 in fact. But as this is a more comprehensive guide, here are the 5 most important survivor perks to mention when we are talking about gens, both for new players as well as veterans. Adrenaline, Better Together, Deja Vu, Prove Thyself and Technician. Adrenaline. This teachable mag perk will trigger once the exit gates are powered, which either means that all gens are finished or the hatch is closed when there is only one person left. When it triggers, you will get healed for one health state and receive a speed boost. And this perk is excellent in clutching out generators. If you are hooked while it triggers, adrenaline will get delayed until you are unhooked. If you have adrenaline equipped, you should try to clutch out the endgame. Don't heal if you don't absolutely have to. Better together. This absolutely underrated Nancy perk will show your teammates the generator you are currently working on if they are in a range of 32 meters. This is great for indoor maps like Midwitch or the game, where generators can be tough to locate. Additionally, when one of your teammates gets down, you will see all of your teammates aura for some seconds, if you are working on a generator currently, which enables you to make a decision if you should keep working on the gen or go for a save. Deja Vu If you ever want to get a grasp of the high priority generators, Deja Vu is the perk for you. Deja Vu will show you the three gens that are closest to each other, once at the beginning of the game and every time a generator is completed for a whole minute at its highest tier. Equipping this will basically eradicate the possibility of 3 genning yourself and is highly recommended for earlier players and even for experienced players if you want to get a better grip of certain maps. Proof thyself. Proof thyself, a teachable Dwight perk, will shave off the 15% repair speed penalty. Additionally to that, you will receive a huge bonus to cooperative actions also known as healing and or repairing together with other survivors. This effect is not steep or OP or anything, but solid and great for farming blood points. Technician Technician is a really good perk for starters and stealthy players that want to sneak generators in high pressure situations. Usually, the killer can hear the sound of a survivor repairing a generator in a distance of 20 meters. This will almost cut it in half, 12 meters. Additionally, when you would miss a skill check, the explosion of a gen will be prevented and you will lose an extra amount of progress. This is really great for beginners to practice and can even be great to sneak gens in high pressure situations, where the killer might be prone to mistakes.
Now let's take a look into the killer's side. Here are some of the most common and powerful gen related perks and perk combos you should be on the lookout for. Corrupt Intervention Discordance Pop Ruin and Undying Thrilling Tremors and Tinkerer. Let's take a look at them one at a time. Corrupt Intervention This perk will block off the three farthest generators from your spawn point at the start of the game. It is useful for killers that need setup and helps to force survivors into a smaller area. Often survivors start wandering in the blocked off areas and might stumble upon totems. So it goes well with Haunted Grounds and Retribution, but not so well with other hex perks. Discordance If a generator relatively close to you is worked on, and as I relatively since it has a range of up to 128 meters, by two or more survivors, you will receive a notification and the generator's aura will turn yellow. Grouping up on generators is basically impossible against this perk. Pop goes to Weasel a teachable perk of the clown, Pop gets activated for a short period of time every time you hook a survivor. While active, damaging a generator will make it lose a quarter of its progress. Believe me, you will see when a killer has popped pretty quick. Hex Ruin plus Hex Undying. This perk combo emerged with the release of the Blight. While Ruin is active, Every generator that currently is not worked on will start regressing until it has no charges left. Undying will let the killer see the aura of every survivor that will walk by a totem. If a totem that is not undying gets cleansed, it will switch to a dull totem, if there are any left, and stay active anyway. You might see where this is going. If a killer can constantly force survivors of generators, this combo will be devastating. There are a lot of perks that will go well with this, like barbecue for example. There are strategies to deal with that combo, but even these often force you to find every single totem. Thrilling Tremors This is a teachable ghost based perk. When the killer picks up a survivor, every generator that currently is not worked on will get blocked for a short duration and highlighted to the killer in white. It has a cooldown after use. This makes it easier for the killer to prioritize the right generators, hinder progress and keep up with the current situation. Tinkerer A hillbilly perk, Tinkerer activates once a gen reaches 70% repair progress. The killer will be notified of that generator and becomes undetectable for a short duration. You can combine this with ruin and dying. It is technically legal to do so and very devastating. So this is the most important information regarding generators. If you like this video and want to know more, I will upload a longer, more detailed version in about a week. Stay tuned! Also, if you want to see more of me and don't miss any other content, my Twitch channel and Discord server are linked in the description. Until the next video, be safe out there, stay healthy and we will see each other in the fog. Have a great day guys!